Some have said that the MAG X870 Hitomahawk is so similar to its predecessor, cheaper MAX X870 Tomahawk, that there was no need for a review, that they were just so absolutely identical in all points. And well, I am here to disagree, because despite a first untrained look at the specs list of both motherboards, the MAG X870 e Tomahawk brings in crucial fundamental differences which makes it a complete different product on its own merit. Now starting with the obvious. Our X870 e Tomahawk comes heavy with its 8-layered low-signal loss ATX PCBs which are reinforced both in sturdiness and signal insulation by two ounces worth of copper plates. This is a go-to foundation platform that MSI has equipped its motherboard all the way from the B850 to the X870 e Tomahawk and for good reasons because it's absolutely perfect in terms of PCIe 5.0 signal insulation, heat dissipation and overall product robustness. So nothing to re-say here. Design-wise, we are and remain in a mineral slash punk aesthetic, more alien-like than military if you ask me, but I do like it. The board remains dressed top to bottom with lots of expensive and premium scented aluminum and, well, other alloys and beams, that sense of sturdiness we all know you came here for. for. RGB-wise, we remain sober with no embedded uh, RGB strip, thank god, but instead we got three RGB connectors to shine all that creative juice you know you have stored deep inside of you. More technically, our board is powered by a pair of Promo 21 chips that we so graciously refer to as the X870E chipset. And even though it doesn't bring much more in terms of PCIe lanes when compared to its cheaper X870, it still manages to bring some excitement with an additional 4 PCIe 4.0 lanes, which will make a world of difference in terms of, of what this motherboard can do, and we will get there uh, very quickly. And as far as the CPU socket goes, our AM5 remains a Ryzen getaway for many years, past and to come, and will support both AM4 and AM5 compatible CPU coolers, worth mentioning. Now, VRM-wise, well, we have the very same and identical solution we had seen in the excellent yet cheaper MSI MAG X870 Tomahawk, which I have reviewed and you should be checking if you haven't done so yet, meaning 1780 amps direct phases organized in a 14 plus 2 plus 1 configuration. And you might justly ask yourself why keeping the exact same VRM when we're dealing with a an upgraded Tomahawk. Well, the Ryzen 9000 series is so much more efficient than last year's Ryzen 7000 series, it doesn't really make any sense to spend more of your money on a more powerful uh, uh, VRM, at least at that price range. Now, in terms of cooling, we have two individual cooling blocks, which both features a double terminal contact design for both our trucks and power stages, which will help speeding up the heat transfer from the components to the block themselves. The main VRM block features a generous 70 square centimeter in terms of radiating area and is fed by a dense 100 cubic centimeter uh, heat storing block, which translates into a massive 52.6 watts convection. As for the VRM side block, we can count on a packed 40 cubic centimeter worth of aluminum to feed its 19 square centimeter worth of radiating area for a solid 20 watt convection. And now as thermal goes, well, without much surprises, the MAG X870 heat Tomahawk results are rather reassuring. Our main VRM stays around 50 degrees Celsius during the entirety of the test and our side block peaks at 61 degrees Celsius, which is more than acceptable. Um, yeah, I can see this motherboard easily able to handle an R9 class Ryzen processor, no question asked. I'm not sure if you did ask the question, but you're here, so I'm gonna assume that you were asking for this information. 
Now, memory-wise, our board can support up to 256GB of DDR5 RAM, able to swap data up to a very fast 8400 million transfers per second, which is the same kind of speeds we have seen on most MSI motherboards lately. But I need to underline that not all RAMs are equal and many of you have been complaining uh, about not getting those kind of speeds. First and foremost, it will need to feature a Hynix M die, a DRAM architecture designed to get you to these higher RAM speeds, uh, but that usually comes at a cost and the best performing, durable and affordable stick I have tested so far are the Patriot Viper Extreme 5, which do feature the M die and are just dumb proof to use. So in short, if you want to, you know, uh, get the most of the specs uh, advertised by MSI, make sure to get the right kind of sticks. Now, storage-wise, well, this is also where we're going to start to see the subtle differences between the Mag X870 Tomahawk and the Mag X870 He Tomahawk. We have four NVMe connectors, two CPU-fed PCIe 5.0 connectors, able to both output up to a top of the industry 128 gigabit per second each. The closest one to our CPU has received the bulk of the cooling attention here. We have double thermal pads, floor and plates for an immediate heat relief, as well as the thickest thermal plate available on the motherboard. Now, the two additional NVMe's are chipset-fed and can and both output a dedicated, non-bifurcated four lanes at PCIe 4.0 standard each for very fast 64 gigabit per second individually. And that is important because that is something we could simply not do on the Mag X870 Tomahawk, which provided less lanes per stick and were actually shared with the PCIe export. So uh, these additional PCIe 4.0 lanes are quite important. And even more when you know that if you were to use this PCIe 5.0 connector at its fully advertised for lanes, well, you would kill the USB 4s uh, on your back IO, which would suck because this is kind of the big sell selling point of the X870 motherboard this year. So the best you can do is to reduce the speed of the second PCIe 5.0 connector by half. So no four PCIe 5.0 lanes, but only two in order for the USB 4 plugs to work, which is exactly how your motherboard will come set up out of the box. So in short, a much um, faster and better storage uh, solution here, which upgrades the X870 Tomahawk from an excellent gamer to, well, an excellent gamer and a solid production board. Now, PCIe export-wise, as in all the Tomahawks this year, we have our three slots. The only important one I want to say is a CPU-fed one, uh, the GPU export, which is the only one to feature a full 16 PCIe 5.0 lanes, which evidently offers some serious future-proofing in terms of graphics card support and the metallic reinforcement, because, yeah, they're not getting any slimmer. Now, a special mention for the excellent GPU eject mechanism, which offers, well, uh, uh, to eject your GPU, but as also locking mechanism to keep it in place no matter what. And that's an MSI only feature. The remaining exports can be seen as more or less useful, but worth noting the more useful one, the PCIe 4.0 Fed uh, export is no longer sharing its uh, uh, bandwidth with M.2 solid drive as we've seen before. So that's another plus point going for this board compared to its previous X870 iteration. Now, more interestingly, back IO wise, well, we have a menu of USB plugs going from the legacy USB 2.01s to the latest and meanest USB 4.0 40 gigabit type C plugs two of them uh, to be precise. And that brings us to a massive 126 gigabit per second combined bandwidth. And of course you have to add to that the sum uh, 30 gigabit per second additional USB bandwidth uh, we will find in the form of front panel connector. Now that is heavy. And the good thing about a USB 4.0 plug, well, uh, it's having a 40 gigabit per second transfer rate fast, but only if you use it with the right kind of SSD stick, like a, a, a Patriot Viper or an external NVMe apparatus such as a Zyk box populated with a PCIe 4.0 M.2 solid state drive. If you go to your uh, uh, you know, sub $10 cheap USB dongle, no matter what it's written on it, well, you are doomed and destined, 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 
for disappointment. Now, in terms of integrated graphics, not only do we have our handy HDMI port right here, but our USB 4.0 plugs double up as display ports output as well. And so the board on integrated graphics alone can support three 4K screen, which is pretty rad. Connectivity wise, well, we have everything which made uh, the Tomahawks so desirable. A low latency, fast Wi-Fi 7, a surge protected 5 gigabit LAN, and our updated Bluetooth 5.0. It's just good, good, and very good. Finally, audio wise, we got our solid ALC4080 codec from Realtek, which despite being cleansed by only 200 microfarads worth of audio capacitors, will benefit from the eight PCB layers in terms of static insulation. Overall, well, the, the very same excellent back IO we had seen on the Mag X870 Tomahawk, which is good news all around, nothing to re-say here. Now, cooling wise, well, uh, the board proposes a solid airflow support with up to eight PWM fan connectors. One could have argued that six was enough, but okay. And in terms of water cooling, well, uh, one of the PWM fan doubles up as an all-in-one water pump connector. But obviously, MSI has equipped this board with its new 2025 uh, uh, feature, the Easy Connector, which with a single plug will support all the connections necessary to run an all-in-one water cooler. Great for the ease of build, great for the cable management, and great for the soul. Troubleshooting wise, MSI did rather well with our loyal first aid uh, easy debugger, a clear CMOS and BIOS flashback button on the back IO, but most importantly, and you know it, we have uh, an error OLED screen, which remains too rare at this price range, and I am psyched to see it here. Uh, a must and a gold standard in terms of troubleshooting, in my opinion. Now, in conclusion, <laughs> the MAG X870 e Tomahawk Wi Fi will cost you about 320 USD before taxes in the US and 299 euros in the EU, including taxes, which, you know, makes them very close in terms of pricing on, on both continents. And the fact that the price gap between the X870 and the X870 e Tomahawks are going from minimal to Nile makes it an well, a very obvious choice, an easy conclusion here, because the additional PCI4 lanes brought by the X870 e chipset and the subsequent better PCI4.0 NVMe supports makes the Tomahawk is no longer only an excellent gaming monster, but is as well a solid production-friendly motherboard. In other words, it now achieves the perfect balance between uh, business and pleasure. A, a, a content creator dream, if you will, and with almost inexistent price gap, as it stands right now, you'd be an Olympic graded moron not to go for it.